Hello and welcome. This is another Daily Dharma. My name is Dina. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am so excited to be outdoors once again. I love the natural environment and I hope that you guys can hear all of the layers of nature waking up, speaking to each other and amongst each other. And I hope that you can take in a little bit of the beauty of the landscape as it's waking up. All of these readings are intended to be timeless. So I do hope that something that comes out here today resonates deeply with you and your heart with heart chakra. Integrating those uh, heart resonances with your own messages, meaning, and experiences will help you to understand symbolically what we're channeling in. So all of these messages are timeless. So if today's does not hit home for you, go ahead and check out some other readings for more important messages that may be trying to reach you. We have romantic love integration here too. So making room in the heart for our ideals, our hopes, our dreams to take shape. Now we have Mother Gaia with romantic love. It's like even in the absence of, of love in our material world, if you will, in, right in front of our eyes, we can still generate a sense of um, heartfelt peace and connection and connectivity amongst beings. And I think that that's what's kind of coming in today too. Getting a little bit of changing pressure in my head. I was going to say, <laughs> I don't know if any of you suffer from allergies around seasonal time, I would not have ever thought to be somebody who identified with having allergies in the past. Um, I've been pretty healthy and I've been able to keep myself in a healing mode for most of my life. Um, we're getting magical authority. However, right now, I have noticed a few of my allergies speaking to myself, and I know that this is about me, but symbolically, these messages are coming into my brain here to connect with your messages today. Um, so I'm sensing there's some, some throat, some dust, some pollen, or something that is kind of aggravating the system in some type of a way. There's a sensitivity to our environment emerging and this could definitely be something temporary or something that you might choose to look more deeply into. Um, but magical authority coming out while we're speaking of this talks about the ability to um, self-diagnose and self-heal. Now because this is uh, mainstream life that we're living in, I do have to add the disclaimer, I am no medical authority, unless you speak to those upstairs. So, same thing with yourself, you might not be medically trained, but you know your body and what it's trying to tell you, and if something doesn't quite fit, um, you could get yourself into the false magic of, I mean, let's face it, if you Google your symptoms, uh, there I go with the... If you search up on the internet your symptoms, you could very well find that you're suffering from every single ailment out there because every single ailment that creates dis-ease in the body has a number of specific symptoms that come out for almost everything if you think about it. So a cold can also resemble allergies and, and in that way also ascension symptoms can seem like a cold or like allergies. Um, so now soul time and authority. So take time to 
not only internet search up, but to connect with nature and feel into any dis-ease in the body and uh, don't ignore those signs and symbols coming up. There's something about creating greater health and abundance for ourselves. So, all right, I'm going to stop there for just a moment. <clears throat> this morning's inspirational YouTuber, um, that one of the people that I follow, um, I'll maybe post the link in the description box below because it was so interesting. Going along with the one that I had um, done a broadcast talking about those energies of the quantum consciousness and the physics of consciousness, uh, this other individual, I think it's Stefan Burns. Um, anyways, uh, this guy usually talks about the solar anomalies, and this time he was talking about Earth's hum which was the name of the video. And since we've got Gaia coming out here, it was in the video, it didn't talk much about the Schumann resonance, with, which he seemed to indicate was something happening with the, the light and the earth. Um, but the hum of the earth he was talking about was generated from ocean seismic activity and the way that that distributes differently based on the time of the year and and many factors but he was talking about how this really was evidenced in our biorhythms and I found that so fascinating because he said that um, the primary wave action that he was charting um, had some correlation with blood pressure and he said that the secondary one that he was speaking about the secondary wave was more so related to the breath and so to me as somebody who's trying to listen and I correlated that with the part of the the quantum uh, sorry my dog is acting up over there um the quantum video talked about, I believe it was gravity equals acceleration of charge. Come here, let me help. Oh, you got it. Good boy. The most important thing on the tarot, tarot table today. Sit. Sit down. Stay. A little bit of treats to keep the pooch happy. So I believe, yes, gravity is equal to magnetism, and it, I believe it said the um, acceleration of charge. And so if you talk about the acceleration of charge within the body, is that not blood pressure? So the charge, and, and also let's talk about how the blood and the lungs and the body working together, heart and lungs, and brain, of course, being some of the primary, primal factors of um, determination and um, synchronization of body biorhythms and development of our chemistry. Um, so the charge, the blood carries the breath. And so as we breathe, then we, the breath actually kind of begins to govern the pulse and whether or not we feel that we're being um, in a stressful situation. If we're being stressed out, shallow breathing can create greater stress than deep breathing. So when we're stressed, if we can accomplish a deeper breath, we gain greater grounding through connecting more deeply with the, not only the body, but the great mother, Mother Gaia. And so what I'm seeing here, as some of you know, I always view this as the top-down view of the double helix DNA. Lay down. Lay down. Come on. And right now I'm seeing this also as the multiple layers, 
the stacking, the harmonic octaves of various beings. Come on. He sees something. I may have to pause. The stacking and the octaves that are operating on the various levels here. Um, so we can talk about those really long frequencies of Mother Earth and then the shorter frequencies of um, the layers up until we start to recognize the human's pulse and heartbeat and biorhythms and breath being faster than the earth, just like those birds have a much faster heartbeat because they're so much smaller. I think that that is fairly true across the board, but it's just the way that the symbol and the channel is coming through. So, so what does this really mean? What are we trying to say? It's like um, the ability to oxygenate and breathe into the body puts us, nests the spirit correctly into alignment with the embodiment, alignment, embodiment, centering and grounding. So as above, so below, the more that spirit is brought in, the more we're connected to the earth, the more that we can... Um, travel on those planes of cosmic knowing and our DNA becomes nested in the greater DNA and in that process where breath and body connect deeply with all this global um, resonance um, that's literally magnetism it creates the the embodiment full embodiment process is similar to the soul um, oh, the words words tough when I'm in the channel uh, it's the regathering of the fragmented soul parts soul retrieval that's what it is the regathering of all of our mass that's been dissipated and distracted into the moment into the breath with the body and um, that creates charge, the accelerated charge created from more breath, more oxygen in the bloodstream, um, and the synchronized blood pressure creates magnetic gravity. Is what I'm what I'm hearing and sensing from that. And that whole tangent brought to you by spending the time to. Um, nest yourself with Mother Earth is healing on many levels, but also allows us to tune into the higher messages of not only like, okay, you have this symptom that we can treat, like, okay, you have migraines, okay, then let's um, give you this migraine medicine. P.S. The side effects are, let's get our auctioneer voice going a mile a minute with, you know, death stroke and all these other things it's like is that necessary the migraine is a symptom of something so instead of masking our symptoms with uh, external um, it's like lipstick on a pig they say you know you, you can't make the migraine necessarily better by masking it if you're going to create all these other things that happen because of it so migraines is just an example could just as easily be something else like um <laughs> there's so many ads for medicines on tv and i'm thinking well i understand that these people are very much in pain and that's why why anybody would choose to take something that has all these side effects such as you know the masking of pain that happens with any type of comfort seeking behavior that some people can become addicted to um such as just even like tv or radio or white noise was coming up earlier when isn't this soundtrack so much better take that in divine masculine and sacral the sacral chakra Frequency of the orange flower of life supports our ability to flow with our desires and stimulates our creative power to manifest success and abundance in our lives. 
And that's what it is. To manifest success and abundance is our ability to flow. And also, let's talk about how, okay, oxygen is the air. It's the masculine frequency. Um, and the blood is like the... Um, the waters through the earth. It's the oceans of the earth. It's our water element, which is the feminine. And it's um, our ability to flow with our desires is the ability to say, not I envy that person, they get something that I don't. It's to say, there's no reason to envy that person when I can emulate that person in some type of a way, but do it better because it'll be my process and my thing that's coming in. And how would I do it differently? Ooh, I could add this element and that element in allowing ourselves to feel not only worthy, but capable and taking this small actions, actionable steps to that end point. So let's see. Divine Masculine remains at the bottom. 1616 16 on the counter there. <clears throat> it's almost like a double epiphany. It's like, oh yeah. And sometimes we can get discouraged on the pro in the process because it seems to take a long time. But think about how long we've been distracted, how long we've been um, almost contributing to our illnesses in some cases, right? And it takes a minute to unplug all that. Romantic love, first on the deck. Not only uh, encountering and exploring our ideals, but we talked about that sacral chakra, the pursuit of our desires. What is it that you want, either in the relationship that you've already got or one that you're manifesting for yourself now? The frequency of romantic love supports our journey to feel whole and complete through the experience with and the reflection of a conscious lover. And this doesn't need to be your partner needs to be the most conscious and match your frequencies, although isn't that incredible when that can happen. But it's also recognizing that there are lovers all around us. The, the Earth Mother is a lover. It's not a, a sexualized love. When we talk about romantic love, it doesn't necessarily mean physically romantic. It can talk about the idealized potentials of feeling, on the bottom of the deck I peaked, it's compassion. Feeling that compassionate resonance and reflection with other conscious individuals who are living from their heart space. Heart chakra is on the bottom when we began. It's like being able to sometimes not hold one person as like you have to be all of these things to me or or there's this um what is that not the presenting problem there's a, a term in psychoanalysis i think where uh it's like i think it's uh, associated with bipolar and let's you know we're in the big eclipse moon cycle so all of us are somewhat responding to these oceans um, and tides and the seismic forces of trying to find our own fulcrum of balance and so the emotional tides are showing us that if we're um, putting all of our so-called eggs in one basket of one individual then maybe we're setting the the expectations for one individual as though they have to be the everything. But when we can be more complete um, in ourselves and feeling whole to ourselves, where we're like, okay, well, this person is amazing and lovable in all of these ways, but they don't have these other couple things. How can I pursue that fulfillment in other ways? And if you need intellectual stimulation, you know, join some kind of online chat group and something that is um, into what you're into or find um a friend at at work to discuss and strategize with things at work and that might you know allow you to balance out your need for that logic and inspirational problem solving there so you don't have problems in your romance that need solving all the time realization it's that epiphany realization point double epiphany realization the tower moment uh, 
The frequency of realization supports the internal process of becoming aware of our heart-centered truth, as well as the external process of becoming our highest expression in this world. So it's not for others to, um, to be for us. It's for ourselves to pursue that desire that's speaking to us. Um, and also not to create any types of resentments against others for not being the way that we are. Gaia showing herself once again here. So maybe that sense of romance and idealized self-love is really coming from your natural environment or we're being told that that's one of our options here. And we can tune into that frequency anywhere. Uh, <clears throat> one of the takeaways in that video was that um, even though the ocean creates this, this hum through these various waveforms that are being emitted, these actually travel quite far distant inland. They affect the entirety of the earth. Um, and that's probably because there's more water than land mass on the earth. We're surrounded. We're all some, somewhat islands in a way. And um, <clears throat> so it's like no matter how far or how distant we feel from our roots, from our nature, from nature herself, or the, cap the capacity to schedule that time in, know that no matter where we are at, we can, we can set and allow ourselves to open up the breath and body and blood connection <clears throat> to nest within those frequencies. And that's when we're really going to feel that profound sense of love. And I would suspect that unconditional love is coming up very soon here. But first we talk about grounding our energies. So any type of breath and body work, um, we definitely can, um, I think one of the first things that we need to talk about is the root always. It's the mother. The mother is the root. And talk about like our connection to the earth is the earth star chakra. <clears throat> uh, there's more coming up about the filament within the earth's fibers, the wave fibers, and the way that the heart is also has those various seven layers, I believe, of muscle tissue all traveling in various different orientations. Um, so the muscle fibers, almost like I'm looking at a piece of OSB, oriented strand board, for those nerds that know. Um, it's like plywood, but it's more with wood chips glued together. And same thing with plywood to increase the structural integrity by crisscrossing the fibers rather than putting them all as one. All as one will bend in the same way and it will uh, twist and bend easier than if we have this way the, and then this. That crisscross is creating more strength and integrity. And I don't know why that came out with the root. It's something about... Um, <clears throat> Crisscross something. Let's see. Communication. Maybe it's cross wires. And let's see here. The frequency of communication supports our ability to exchange information in many different forms. It reminds us to run every piece of information, both incoming and outgoing, through our heart, the center of our truth, to stay in the flow of source and balanced exchange. So... I think that that represents then the various individuals playing into our situations, how we're all kind of on our own little trajectory. We've all got our own paths to walk, and these can seemingly interfere with each other or crisscross, but in that presentation about the waves, one of the things that was being shown is that you have what's known as constructive and deconstructive interference patterns. You can see this in any type of quantum or waveform. All things are kind of traveling in their own direction and however they, they crisscross determines whether they are able to 
um, build something much bigger, synergize and build upon each other's energies. And this happens both in the above the water surface, we'll see the wave get larger than on the other sides, but also it goes very deep into the depths of the water as above, so below. And I believe that this is one of the triggers to then send the other type of waveform through the, the ground, the literal grounding, and then through the earth. And so similarly, if you can follow the tangent, people in our, in our world can sometimes cancel our, our efforts or potentials. And this is sometimes good and bad and ugly and otherwise. And sometimes we can build together. So the way that we are grounded in our breath and body and with the Mother Earth and with our ideals, we can realize greater communication, uh, both subtle and overt. So the overt ones being those visual cues, like somebody's furrowed brow or somebody glaring at you with their ugly <laughs> projection or, or somebody over here like, mm -hmm, you can tell they're in a great mood, their eyebrows are raised, our brains and bodies are, are triggered by facial cues and recognition if we have the eyes to see, of course, I mean, not all do, but there's other things. We can listen to the way that somebody walks, we can observe their their um their gait and their spring in their step and seeing a card over there in the deck <clears throat> but also the subtle cues of the way that a person's aura feels and the way that we connect with them and we don't even need to be around them if we have entangled with another individual on some level we've all entangled with everyone because we're all nestled within earth um the collective impacts us but those people that we literally engaged with remain in our energy at a distance. So even our thoughts and our beliefs of whether or not we're getting along with that individual or whether or not we see conflict or, or um, constructive op opportunity there is critical to the use of our magic. I love it. 31. The frequency of magic supports our intrinsic ability to grow and expand beyond this moment, to move towards possibilities and expressions that are as grand and profound as we can imagine or idealize and realize. All that is required is our belief in their manifestation. So the belief in their manifestation is like... Uh, full circle back to that divine masculine with the sacral chakra. It's like um, belief sometimes can be in the head, but the belief is also that core belief of whether or not it is accomplishable, whether we have the capacity, whether we're in resonance or whether we um, have the resources or not. You know, it's like <clears throat> so many people talk about their age in that manner, like, oh, well, I'm beyond that point in my life. And yeah, you might not be an all-star gymnast if you've never trained and now you're 80. That you, might be something you might need to give up on. But I think that you can follow that many things in life, we can definitely rewire our, our brain. We can reintroduce health and well-being through multiple outlets, especially intellectually, we can assist the ability of our neurons and synapses in our blood vessels, whether they're able to be flexible and pliable, and the condition of our hair, and all of these other factors by adding something as simple as collagen. And I say simple, but it's not always easy. There's other factors that either catalyze or allow the body to metabolize this appropriately into healthier tissues. And tissues are, if nothing else, that cellular replication that happens through our ability to generate abundance, mentality, and happiness, delight, and um, <clears throat> joy in our life. The feeling of blessed, being blessed, 
It's like too blessed to be stressed. Yeah, wouldn't that be easy if we never had stress? But uh, it's all coming down to um, our ability to heal ourselves, to diagnose ourselves. It's like, yeah, I may have migraines, but to bring this to that original example only, not that one of us has migraines. It's not own sickness. I found myself saying that, oh, my blank, it's not mine. It's this temporary state that I am feeling and engaging with based on a dis displacement of my body and the alignment that's um, that came out of whack one time. And now it's spiraled into muscular and skeletal pain in an area of my back. And this is... Um, something that can be seen to also be healed on other levels. Many of us are energy workers that will be tuning in here and can absolutely see how we may have um, perhaps over-prioritized some other pursuits. Meanwhile, the body is trying to get us back into alignment with the highest and best for our health and well-being at this time. So let's leave this one here. I hope that that helped you guys and tune in later. We're going to try to get the rest of the zodiacs done today before the end of March and the eclipse season. Take care.